Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also happens to be the 500th video on the channel. That's right, I'm your host Jonathan Higgs, and it is mind-blowing, 500 <laughs> videos. That is so many videos, good grief. And uh, if you guys remember about seven episodes ago, we did the 100th episode of Mondays. So this is actually episode 107 of Mondays. So the rest of the balance of that 500 have been some gameplay, some uh, tech tip things here and there, but mainly reviews. It is crazy that there are that many videos on this channel, just mind blowing. Anyway, um, welcome to the show. If you guys are brand new here, let me show you how this thing works. It is a Q&A show, so questions come from last week's Monday's episode, and you put them down below in the comment section, you vote up your favorites, and they'll get on this show. Same thing goes for next week. Put them down below here if you have a question for me. I read through every one, I can only answer a few though, and get them on the next show. Um, also, real quick, I got a couple things. We'll have a mini review this week too, also. First, patches. I still have a few of these left, a few of the Call Your Hits, but not many. I'm thinking like maybe a dozen or so left. I mean, they are almost gone. You guys have been blowing through them. And then these that came in last week, or uh, two weeks ago, we talked about them. I am way more than half gone on these. So uh, it's uh, only a few left. I think it may be like 40 or 50. Actually, it's way more than half gone. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to know, uh, pick these up. They're at the Airsoftology store. It's airsoftology.com slash store. And they are $8 shipped anywhere worldwide. So there's no extra charge on shipping no matter where you are. Um, okay, so we got those knocked out. Oh, real quick, where I'm going to be coming up here in the next few weeks. First off, this Saturday, on the 27th of August. I'm gonna be at the Airsoft GI swap meet. I've got a ton of scratch and dent, like not really scratch and dent, but like review guns, products I've used. Um, they've been sitting around. I just can't play with all these guns. I'm gonna get rid of them. I'm gonna be selling them there for blowout, like just blowout insane, like what they would be uh, if you bought like uh, boneyard type guns, but these are still like pretty much brand new in the box. I mean, they've been used to like review, maybe a few test shots, uh, maybe used in one game or something like that. So if you guys are interested, you're in the SoCal area. This is the GI store in Walnut, California. I will see you there on Saturday. I think it's like from 10 or 11 in the morning till about seven or something. I'll be there till I sell all my stuff. I also have patches on site too, if you guys wanna pick them up there in person. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to come by and hang out with you and uh, we can chat and you can ask me questions and we can just kind of chill throughout the day too. Um, and then, don't forget Copperhead's coming up soon. I'll be flying out for that the following weekend. So I'll be heading out of there. So a lot of big updates. I know you guys are like, get to the questions already. But I do wanna show you something. It's a review I'm working on. I always get a lot of uh, chat when you guys are, uh, when I pull out one of these guys. Yes, it is the holy grail of airsoft pistols. It is a Glock. Now, if you guys watched uh, probably four months ago, five months ago, I had an agency arms slide on this Glock. Still some agency parts like the trigger guard and the flare, but this is the um, Adam slide by Unity Tactical from PTS. And I fit it on here. I'm gonna to try to bring this with me to Copperhead and run this as my sidearm. So uh, this will kind of be my cool, I mean, check out the back of that thing. It's even on the, like the striker plate. Um, super cool slide, actually made by the same people that do the agency arms. So it was super easy for me to install because I already did one of those. Uh, like I said, full reviews coming on this, uh, but so far, so good. All right, enough of me talking, yapping and all that stuff. Now it's time for what you're really, really here for, and that is the Palco Mail Call and your questions. Chris Ng writes, what are your thoughts on speed software teams such as SIG? Is it SIG or SYG? I can never remember that. Um, actually, I think it's a great thing. I know Speedsoft or SpeedQB is the, the SYG guys call it. Um, they get a bad rap. They really do in this industry because it's, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, they're just running. They're not playing the game like it's supposed to. But there are a lot of ways to play Airsoft. And I think the, the SYG guys are doing it right in the speed QB or uh, Speedsoft world. I think it's great, they're organized, it's team-based, they're turning it into a sport in that, and I think that's gonna only help grow this hobby in that segment. Now, does that mean I'm all for Speedsoft and heck with Milsim? No, I like all play styles. In fact, I've actually been considering building a somewhat speed-ish soft, I guess you wanna call it that, loadout. Just basically something fast and light I can play when I do a lot of indoor CQB. I've been playing a lot of that since I've been on the West Coast. But as for these guys, I think if the team plays fair, uh, they play honorably, they're not overshooting their opponents, again, not doing that polar star, double tap trigger, 40 rounds a second garbage, which these guys do not do that. I see them mainly play with pistols. I mean, they are all on it with the HPA pistols, which is actually a pretty big disadvantage in its own little way uh, in uh, Airsoft. I think it's a fantastic thing to help grow this hobby and sport or spobby or whatever we call this thing. So yeah, two thumbs up for the SYG guys. 
Kobe Bryant asks, where'd you get the weekend operator shirt? I want one so bad. So yeah, I picked that up um, from, actually got the chance to meet him. It was given to me for free uh, from Six Millimeter America. It's the actual Six Millimeter America, six M E R I C A dot com is the actual site has that plus a couple other different shirts designs things like that and some patches on the way too uh, great product company really like the guys and i like the shirts good stuff uh, i like the design and definitely airsoft lifestyle so yeah if you want to uh, check them out I'm not getting paid by them or anything like that link i'll have uh, down in the description below Jeff Robinson writes, hey John, I was wondering what your opinion on a reward-based objective game would be. For instance, players are rewarded with accessories, gas blow pistols, clothing, etc. for completing, let's say, a raid, for instance, almost how Destiny or The Division does it. I think it'd be really cool. It'd be a little more challenging to pull off, but, uh, and very more expensive, because you'd assume that they, people would come in with their own stuff and prizes would be rewarded throughout the game. I think those would work best if you were playing against a dedicated opposing force. I think that's why those games if you're looking at things like the division or uh, destiny when you're in the raid portion of both of those games you're playing against ai so you'd really have to have an experience where teams could run through and have the same experience uh, so the level playing field to earn those items and the enemies maybe could drop certain things that were tagged let's say there are pistols or something that were rewards they're maybe taped a certain color uh, like purple or something like that okay cool this is my purple pickup i can grab this and uh, everybody can kind of roll forward or you know divvy up the the good stuff at the end of each round i think it'd be an amazing amazing setup but with rewards like that pretty much for everybody to run through it would be pretty pricey because you have to fund those somehow so it'd probably be a super expensive game to pull off that said if somebody does it sign me up i'm gonna be there mr dt productions writes do you think we'll see heads-up display goggles like the ones featured on engadget and airsoft in the coming future and if so would you consider it cheating so first off, let's address this mask. If you guys haven't seen this, this is super cool. It was in CES. It was actually one of their uh, most innovated wearable technology. I think it won the, the top innovation wearable technology award at CES this year, which happened, uh, I think, in January. Yeah, it's right around SHOT Show time. It's like around the week before or the week after. So it's made by um, Empire. is the paintball company. They partnered with a company called Recon for their heads-up display. Now, Recon's a company that's owned by Intel, which if you own a computer, chances are you probably have an Intel chip unless you have an AMD chip. So, very large company, and Recon is a wearable technology. Now, not wearable like this. This is a Garmin Phoenix 3, which is most your wearable stuff is like a watch like this. This is actually a little heads-up screen that sits inside of the mask and gives you a lot of information. The first one, purpose-built for paintball and could very much be used for airsoft. It has GPS locator. You can see on a map where your other teammates are. If they have this, you can link into them. Uh, it has an altimeter, a barometer. Um, it has a gyroscope, uh, so it knows which way you're looking. All of those things. So it's a little mini map that pops up in the corner uh, of the bottom of your screen, so you can kind of glance down and see what's going on. Now, the paintball one also, this has some features that I could see very helpful on your more intelligent guns, like PTWs, Polar Stars, things like that. The Empire Mask, uses uh, it links Bluetooth to the paintball marker and will give you all the settings. You can make setting changes on your gun through the mask. You can also see round counts, uh, how many BBs or in this case paintballs you've shot or how many rounds you might have left if you're playing limited ammo games. Um, all that information pops up on there. I can see this tying in with like some of the, the G&G tracer unit, the X-Cortec that has like the laser box that does round counting and chrono all of those things all linking together for this amazing system and then even incorporating communications man then you're set i love this now would it be considered cheating and giving someone a huge advantage i think it gives somebody a huge advantage i mean you'd be able to know where your team is have that instant look okay i've got a teammate that's 50 feet that way even though you can't see him in the brush you can see him over there but it's still not going to give away the opponent's position it's going to give you the opportunity to coordinate better so uh Will it be cheating? I don't know. Some fields may not allow it. I think at big milsim games, you'd see the biggest advantage out of something like this if they could find a way to make it look a little more milsimmy instead of like a paintball mask. But uh, at local fields, small fields like that, I don't think it'd give you too much of an advantage to make you cheating. Now at tournaments, something like Speak UB, absolutely, unless both teams had it then. That would be the different uh, factor. But yeah, I think it's neat. I'm super excited to see something like this come out. The Recon Snow 2 is the actual system it's based on. If you guys are gonna do some research on that, type in Recon Snow 2 and you can learn about the technology. And also I have some links about this story too, of something you guys wanna dive in a little deeper on. You're kind of the geeky side like me. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research on this and uh, you guys can check out those links in the description below, take you over and learn a lot more about the Recon Snow 2 and the Empire Mask. 
Well, guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it is like always, it's time for the Cobra Headsets video recommendation of the week. This one comes from a channel that I haven't really seen a lot of activity from in a while, and they pop this video up because you know YouTube doesn't like just give you everybody. They kind of like recommend things to you. This one just popped up in my feed. I'm like, hey, they had a video a couple months ago. Um, it is the team Tactical Black Cats out of France. Um, these guys put out great videos. They always have. They've been one of my favorites. These guys and track uh, was the other team from France. And uh, this one is Airsoft War TBC at Casern. It's Tower Blocks and Elevators is the name of it. And it really is. Uh, it's like the gameplay is cool, but the fact they're playing in like an area with huge office buildings and big high rise towers with functional elevators. I mean, literally you press a button, go to a floor and you can go up and down in these like 20 story towers. It is crazy. And there's more than one tower set. Like there are multiples. Uh, the fact that this whole place is like abandoned is mind boggling, like underground parking garages. It's just, it's huge. It's, it's awesome. And it's just outside of Paris too, which is kind of neat. So guys, if you want to see Airsoft in probably one of the coolest places, I would love to go play. Definitely check out this video. And as always, you can click the uh, image right over here to my side or links in the description below. All right, guys, that's it for this week. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me here, asking some awesome questions and being so cool down in the comment section. Uh, I really, really do appreciate and like I said before, if you want to get your question on the show, down in the comments, put it down there and vote up your favorites and I will get them, do the best job I can to get on the next show. So guys, until next week, go out, have some fun, play some airsoft, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.